Hello, in a previous video we looked at the distribution of sam sample means uh, for a normal distribution. And so for example, if we had something that was normally distributed like this, normally distributed with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and then we had a sample size, we had a sample say of a particular size, then we found that that was also would be normally distributed with the sampling distribution x bar would be normally distributed where x bar is a mean of n lots of samples of n lots of, that that is normally distributed with mean mu but standard deviation called standard error sigma over the square root of n so therefore variance is squ uh, sigma squared over n and it's important to appreciate this is like a distribution in itself that's basically the distribution of all possible samples obviously there's an infinite number of them you know all possible samples from the original distribution here if you were to take keep taking samples of size n from this original distribution which i've drawn in red on on the diagram here because you're kind of averaging out the extremes you the the, the um, sampling distribution will of the sample mean will have a tighter will have a tighter standard deviation but the same mean okay and we call that standard deviation standard error so that's where we were with the um with this idea of the sampling distribution now here's the thing if the this um this is one of the most important theorems in mathematics the central limit theorem says basically if a distribution um and it has defined mean so there are funny distributions that you can get which don't have defined mean cosy distribution have a totally off uh, the a level further maths course but if a distribution has defined mean then the um, mean mu and standard deviation deviation sigma say then provided n is sufficiently large the sampling distribution the mean of a sample of this, so the distribution of x bar, which of all the of all these samples, the mean of all these samples, uh, is normally distributed. And such that the sampling distribution is normally distributed with the same mean, but the standard deviation sigma over the square root of n, so variance sigma squared over n. So this is very powerful. So it basically means that if if the sample size is large, then we can use this, uh, we can use a normal distribution to make inferences from the original distributions provided n is sufficiently large. So that's quite important, it's quite a big deal really, and it's probably the most fundamental theorem there is in statistics, and one of the most in the whole of mathematics. So uh, a proof of it is beyond the scope of A-level uh, A level maths, but it's really really important to theorem to get to grips of if n is large even if the original even if the original distribution is not normally distributed then the sampling distribution the distribution of sample means 
will be normally distributed with approximately with mean mu and standard DBS and sigma over the square root of n. Let's say no proof, but I will show you, a, I will uh, at this point have a look at a few demonstrations, a few simulations which might help. Okay, I should give a big shout out to uh, a guy called Herr Lohninger, University of Vienna, um, or the Universität Wien, um, uh, who's come up with a simulation, a few years old now, but I think it really does the job pretty nicely. Um, obviously, we don't need to apply the uh, normal distribution, uh, the central limit theorem when the original distribution is normally distributed, because it really doesn't matter what the sample size is here. We could have a you know, quite small sample size, uh, and here what's happening is the video is basically we're taking samples of six and recording those the mean of those six samples on the the graph below and lo and behold we're getting normally distributed and we can see that reasonably quickly of course we're up to uh, nearly 2000 samples here already but we can see we've got a tighter normal distribu uh, normal distribution by the factor of square root of six okay so let's stop that and let's just change the distribution to something uh, different. We've got some kind of skewed distribution. I'm taking the samples of 50 and then just keeping on recording those sample size of 50 and it's going to do it pretty quickly. And again, what we can see because of the large sample size, even though the original distribution is skewed, uh, is skewed, is, uh, skewed eventually we're getting a not something that's resembling a normal distribution okay and because of the large sample size okay and let's do one more what's called the exponential distribution that this distribution basically models kind of waiting time you know if you you know i often talk about you know imagine you're looking in the sky looking for for meteors or comet uh, meteors kind of burning up in the atmosphere they might occur, you know, as you look in the sky uh, for each hour, you look in the sky once every two hours or so. And this is a kind of distribution that you might get uh, called the exponential distribution. It's related to, to the, the uh, Poisson distribution, which, of course, is discrete. Uh, obviously, it's heavily skewed now. But here again, I've got a sample of 50. Because I'm taking the mean of each sample uh, size, 50, I will find, and again, the, you know relatively quickly that the distribution that uh, that i'm actually the sampling of that if i was to take all the possible samples of 50 from this exponential distribution i'm going to get something that's approximately normally distributed as i say the proof is way beyond uh further math say level but it is a pretty fundamental theorem in the whole of statistics and in the whole of maths okay so here we go back to the uh, original uh, the original theorem. I probably should say approximately. At what point do we say it is normally distributed? Or what sample size do we need to say it's uh, normally distributed? Well, of course, it will depend on how weird it is. If I really do have the most uh, kind of weirdly skewed distribution like this, say, even more... Um, Let's go in with PDF. Oh, that's a, can't draw a straight line at the moment. If I have a weirdly normally distributed, uh, not normally distributed, but a weird distribution that's kind of heavily skewed or strange, strange in some way, it might take long, but so long, a long time. But so long as the mean is defined and the standard deviation, it, uh, I know it might sound uh, uh, pedantic distinction but there are distributions without a defined mean and standard deviation um, as long as it has that the central mean, uh, limit theorem can be applied as a very rough thing n greater than or equal to 30 because i know students very rough it really depends on the rough kind of guideline normally as far as the exam goes they'll they'll probably give you a number which clearly is good enough and it's uh you know 50 or whatever and um because of the context of the question you know that the central limit theorem is appropriate 
Okay, so very important theorem. Very important you understand the gist of it. I'm going to do a few examples from past exam papers uh, on the central limit theorem. And uh, hopefully then you've got the idea. That's a good place to stop. Bye.